Graphing rational functions, part three. Our topic for today is behavior of the graph on either side of a vertical asymptote. A few things to recall from previous lessons. If a rational function is in lowest terms, meaning that its numerator and denominator have no common factors, then any zeros of the denominator correspond to vertical asymptotes of the graph, and any zeros of the numerator correspond to x-intercepts of the graph. Recall that a, function, a, a rational expression will equal zero when its numerator equals zero. If, however, my rational expression has a common factor, x minus a, so in this example, g of x, x minus 2 is a common factor of the numerator and denominator, I should cancel that out, and it results in an equivalent expression. So here I've named that equivalent expression r of x. So I see in this expression, x equals negative 4 is a vertical asymptote of the graph, but because x equals 2 was undefined in my original function, there's going to be a hole there, and the hole, I evaluate the hole into the simplified function, so I find r of 2, and I see that the coordinates of the hole are 2 comma 2 thirds. Okay, back to our topic for today, which is behavior of the graph on either side of a vertical asymptote. All right, so our first example, we start out with g of x equals 3 over x minus 5. To find any vertical asymptotes, I set the denominator equal to 0. So when I set x minus 5 equal to 0, I get x equals 5, which is the equation of my vertical asymptote. Let me put that on the graph. X-intercepts, I know that a rational expression will equals 0 when its numerator equals 0, but I have a constant here, 3 is never going to equal 0, so I have no x-intercepts. The y-intercept is the value of y when x equals 0, so I get 3 divided by 0 minus 5, or negative 3 fifths, so I have a y-intercept at 0, negative 3 fifths. Let me put that on the graph, right about there. Okay, so we said we wanted to look at what is happening as I get very close to the vertical asymptote. So here my vertical asymptote is x equals 5. Before I get as close as the values in the table, I want to plot uh, just a couple of whole number of points on either side of it. So, sorry. Okay, so let's look at x equals 6 and x equals 7. So if I plug 6 into the function, I get 3 divided by 6 minus 5 is 1, and so I get 3. So when x equals 6, y equals 3. Let's plug 7 in, I get 3 divided by 7 minus 5, so I get 3 halves, or 1 and a half. I'm about there. Now let's look at it as we get really, really close to x equals 5 from the right-hand side. So from the right-hand side of the asymptote, I have 3 over... 5.1 minus 5, which gives me 3 over 0.1, which is the same as 3 over 1 10, or 3 times 10 over 1, or 30. So at x equals 5.1, my y value is up at 30. Let me do the next one, and when x is 5.01, I see that I get 3 divided by 1 100, and so that gives me a y value of 300. And so the next one, when I do 5.001, I'm going to get 3 divided by 1 over 1,000, or 3,000. So I see that as I get really, really close to the vertical asymptote x equals 5 from the right-hand side of it, my function is growing without bound and approaching positive infinity. Now, I know that my function's going to level out here. I know that it can't cross the x-axis again because there are no x-intercepts. In our next lesson, we'll look at leveling behavior, horizontal asymptotes or slant asymptotes. Let's look at the other side uh, of the asymptote. So let's look at the behavior when x equals four. Uh, x equals four. So we've got uh, y equals three divided by four minus five, which is three over negative one or negative 3, so let's do 1, 2, 3, looks like here. If I put in negative 5, I get negative 7 tenths, 
So it looks like it's coming up like this. Again, I know it can't cross the x-axis because I have no x-intercepts. And so it's going to approach negative infinity as it gets close to the asymptote on the other side. Definition, vertical asymptote. The line x equals a is a vertical asymptote of the graph of a function y equals f of x if either, one, the limit of x, f of x as x approaches a, that plus means from the right-hand side, equals plus or minus infinity. So if the function approaches the vertical asymptote from the right-hand side, if the y values approach either positive or negative infinity, you have a vertical asymptote. Or the limit of f of x as x approaches a from the left-hand side. All right, let's see what's going on here with that. So I think I'll choose my magic pen here. Let's look at this one. So here I have my vertical asymptote at x equals 5. So as I approach x equals 5 from the right-hand side, so as I approach x equals 5 from the right-hand side, I see that my y values are growing without bound, approaching positive infinity. As I approach x equals 5 from the left-hand side, I see that my y values are decreasing without bound and approaching negative infinity. So vertical asymptotes basically steer the function in the vertical direction, either to positive or negative infinity. Let's look at another example. So here I have the function f of x equals x minus 2 times the quantity x over x plus 3. It's nicely already factored for me. I see that there are no common factors. So if I set the denominator equal to 0, I have x equals 0 or x plus 3 equals 0. I see that I have vertical asymptotes for the equation x equals 0 or x equals negative 3. I'm going to put them on my graph. I'll just dash that. Here I have x equals 0. Here I have x equals negative 3. X-intercepts, if I set the numerator, I'm not sure why that happened. Uh, if I set the numerator equal to 0, I get x minus 2 equals 0, x equals 2. So I have an x-intercept at 2 comma 0. And to find my y-intercept, if I, well, I already know that I have a vertical asymptote at 0, so since x did not equal 0, I don't have a y-intercept. All right, so we have a vertical asymptote at x equals 0, and one here at x equals negative 3. So we want to look at some behavior on either side of the asymptotes. So at x equals 1, if I plug 1 into the function, I get 1 minus 2 is negative 1 over 1 times 1 plus 3, and I get negative 1 fourth. Right? So at x equals 1, and down here at negative 1 fourth, I know that I'm going to be approaching negative infinity. I have a 0 here, but that's my only x-intercept. The graph's going to level off there, and again, you'll understand that better in our next lesson when we talk about horizontal and slant asymptotes. On the other side of the vertical asymptote, x equals 0, let's look at what's happening at negative 1. So if you plug negative 1 into the function, we get 3 halves as our y value. So let me plot that point. If I plug in negative 2, so at negative 1 we got 3 halves. If I plug in negative 2, I end up with a positive 2, so graph that. Okay, now, I know I have these two points, and I know the graph can't come back down again, because it can't cross the x-axis again, and if I plug in values closer to 3, I see that it's going to be approaching positive infinity here and positive infinity there. So we said that we have a vertical asymptote if as the function approaches that asymptote on either side of it, it approaches positive or negative infinity. I can't approach negative infinity because that would entail crossing the x-axis again, and I only have the one x-intercept at x equals positive 2. Let's put some values over here, negative 4, negative 5, to see what's happening there. 
when I plug in x equals negative 4, I get a y value of negative 3 halves. When I plug in x equals negative 5, I get a y value of negative 7 tenths. And so I know that it's approaching negative infinity. And I know that it doesn't cross. Sorry about that. I know that it doesn't cross the axis again because I don't have any other x-intercepts, and that's what the graph looks like. Our last example, already in factor form, no common factors. So I have a vertical asymptote. When I set the denominator equal to 0, I have vertical asymptotes at x equals negative 2 and x equals positive 2. So let me put them on. This is x equals 2. I have 1 at negative 2. X-intercept, if I set the numerator equal to 0, I get x equals 0. x plus 4 equals 0. x equals negative 4. So x-intercepts, I've got 0 to 0 and negative 4, 0. And if I have an x-intercept of 0, 0, that's also going to be my y-intercept. All right, so let's put my intercepts on. I've got 0, 0. This is 1, negative 1. And I've got negative 4, 0. Okay. All right, so what is happening on either side of the asymptotes? Another value or two here. All right, so when x equals 3, if I plug 3 into the function, I end up with 3 and a half. So looks like I'm right about here. I put in 4, I don't know why I put 5. When I plug in 4 into the function, I get y equals 4 times 4 plus 4 is 8, over 4 plus 2 is 6, 4 minus 2 is 2, so I get 12 over 8, which is 3 halves. So I look and I see that it's decreasing here. So my graph is going like that. I know that it can't cross the x-axis again because uh, my only x-intercepts are at 0, 0, and negative 4, 0. When x equals 1, if I plug that into the function, I get negative 1 and 2 thirds. So when x equals 1, I'm down here. And when x equals negative 1, I get positive 1. So let's plot that for me. So I know that I'm approaching negative infinity on this side of the graph. I know that I'm going through 0. And so I'm approaching positive infinity on that side of the graph. On the other side of the asymptote, let's look at x equals negative 3. If I plug that into the function, I end up with negative 3 fifths. So here I am, I'm down here, and I know that it has to approach negative infinity because it can't cross the x-axis again, and it's going to level out here and not cross the x-axis, and that's what my graph looks like. Stay tuned for graphing rational functions part 4. And in part four, we'll look at horizontal and slant or oblique asymptotes. How fun.